as far removed from dexterity and strength and quality as one can be. We find a build so meta. It almost puts everything else to shame. Not really. It is a really good build though. Um, but one of the scariest aspects of this build for me was its effect on me as a player. This build was great. I played with it on stream for a night and I had an awesome time. Um, and then I went to record this video and I found myself doing stupid shit. Like going for parries when I had literally no health left. If, like, if that had hit me, I'd just be dead. All for the sake of a parry. Um, I didn't respect opponents who did stupid shit. Uh, so I would play stupid back at them to like teach them a lesson or whatever. The build kind of put me on autopilot. And as a result, I was losing and I was getting frustrated. And then that frustration gets even worse when some stupid, even if it was unrelated, even if it was like a weird ass lag kill, it tilted me further and further still to the point where I had to take off the Untrue Dark Ring and actually go invade and remember what it was, you know what I mean? Like, I had to learn to take my opponents seriously. Um, Pink Cognito, who's an excellent invader, uh, and he has a YouTube channel that he's starting up um, with a lot of really, really good content, you should check him out. In one of his videos, he was just discussing how even if a player's bad, you still have to respect the mechanics of the game. Their R1s don't hurt you any less just because they suck. Uh, their weapon doesn't get shorter just because they don't know how to how to PvP, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? You still have to take them seriously. And once I did that, once I got out of my own head and back into like that invader mindset, I was golden. And this build is fantastic. But it's really easy to put yourself on autopilot with this build. Um, so don't do that. Don't do that. The wins will come, but you still have to play right. Uh, now this build was shown to me by Nif. If anyone's not familiar with Nif, I'm going to put his channel in the description. Uh, Nif is an efficient fucking German dude. Um, if the Germans have two things on lockdown, it's ruthless efficiency and summer camps. Now, the version of the build that he uses is far more efficient than mine. Um, I had to put a great sword on mine because y'all know how I feel about great swords. Mm. Anyway, without further ado, here's me killing people with the scariest build in the world. But now, allow me to return to seriousness <laughs> so that we might learn the tale of Galagard the Coward and his two friends, Wizard and Overleveled Gundir Man. Overleveled Gundir Man went for his charging attack on three occasions in a row. Surely we'd never see it coming, but we did. And then Gundir Man found himself parried. He found himself reposted. He found himself dead. Pew pew! said the wizard. But the ball said no. And then the ball was also a crab. The terror of a ball of skeletons being a crab. How is it a crab? Like, seriously, what the fuck? Why is a ball of skeletons a crab inside? Here comes the biggest rat you've ever seen. And there's a mouse standing in that doorway. Galagod, you rat! All of your friends have died. And now the power of magic and lag. Lagic. <laughs> it won't keep you alive forever, Galagod. No. The black flamed terror is knocking at your door or your shield your shield shaped door your no it's a door shaped shield but that's not the door shield they're two different things but one's okay anyway I'm knocking your shield out of the way and killing you Galagard and now you will just be another skull that lines this very room do 
Dude, would you seriously stop? You're not getting your Concord today. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. Shout out to my boy, Thanatos, the Phantom. If you guys aren't familiar with Thanatos, uh, he does... I, the dude's basically a fucking voice actor. Uh, his videos are crazy. He also streams. Anyway, he wanted to have a duel. I don't know if this is the real Thanatos or not. I fight this guy all the time. Like, I always find him uh, co op in and playing throughout the game. Thanatos, won't you join me for a duel? I can't, I, I can't do the guy justice. If you've never heard him, it's it's seriously something else. This dude is out of this world. Anyway, somebody asked about uh, how you fight multiple opponents at once. Um, they wanted, like, a, a how-to guide. Um, keep in mind, a lot of this is going to depend on the weapon type you're using. GG Thanatos, by the way. <clears throat> but here you go. Um, this, is a, this is a classic example of how to deal with multiple opponents at once. Uh, here comes the blue, we've got the one phantom, the blue's going to join in, and then the host is going to join in, we're going to have to fight all these guys. Now, so, I know the blue's right behind me, but I'm just kind of trusting that I can get a few hits in. Now when shit starts getting dicey, escape by any means necessary. Sometimes that means turning around and hitting them. In this situation, it doesn't mean that because of the verticality of the level. I'm able to escape using the verticality of the level, the drop down, the ledges, the stairs, stuff like that. Um, you can use that to your advantage to escape. But most of the time, if you want to escape, you're going to want to hit people a few times. Um, the faster a weapon is, the better in these kind of situations. Just turn and burn and lay waste to these motherfuckers. And what will happen is you'll separate them. One or two will have to back off and heal. And as a result of that, somebody ends up dead. This is why straight swords are so good uh, in, in PvP. They hit multiple opponents at once. A one-handed great sword can also achieve the same things. You just want to make sure you're swinging something that is um, as fast or faster than what your opponents have. Keep your turn and burns erratic and chaotic. Don't ever give them a pattern. And just constantly, you can see I'm just dragging them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not relying on enemies to do the work for me. I'm doing everything myself. Uh, if there were enemies and we could use them to our advantage, then great. But unfortunately, that's not the case here. Uh, so we're just dragging them back and forth, back and forth. He's going to back away to heal. All right. And then here, he backs away one more time to get in his inventory. That's his mistake. He's fucked up. It's me and the host one on one. Rip. I had to put a great sword on this build. I know Nif's fucking powerful German engineering didn't have the great sword on it, but I'm an American and I fucking put ketchup on everything. I had to have a great sword. It's beautiful. Okay, so this is my take on the build. Um, 40 vigor, 38 endurance, 26 vitality, 18 strength, 20 dex. 35 Intelligence and Faith. Uh, Nif emphasized Dexterity so that those Chaos damage, I'm sorry, those Chaos Reposts would do a lot more damage. I went with 18 Strength so I could throw the Lothric Knight Shield on here because that thing is my baby. Uh, here's the equipment. We've got the Onyx Blade, Lothric Knight Sword, Chaos Infused Dagger, Lothric Knight Shield, Pyromancy Flame, Prisoner's Chain, Havel's Ring, uh, and then that other ring slot, uh, Hornet Ring, obviously is a good go-to. I'm using the Priestess for the extra dark defense. If you wanted to, you could do Scholar for extra magic defense. And both of those rings are going to increase your damage because everything scales with uh, intelligence and or faith. Uh, it goes without saying that dark damage is great for chipping through shields. Most people don't have a lot of dark defense, so excellent returns there. Um, but now what's curious is... Is Chaos Infusion bugged on criticals and doing too much damage, or is Dark Infusion bugged and not doing enough on criticals? I'll let that shit show go down in the comments. Uh, the rest of us will be here watching the video. We're going to check in on uh, Kyra the Phantom and Demonic Nate, the Abyss Watcher, who uses the Shield of Want and the Dark Sword, as all of the Farron Legion did. Demonic Nate has read all the item descriptions. He knows the true lore. Dark Sword, Shield of Want, Abyss Watcher. Let that sink in, you guys. Really fucking great. 
really. Just, just so fucking cool. Guard break. Into backstab. Ludicrous. I had to take the Hornet Ring off this build, seriously. Like, occasionally, I mean, like, if you had an overleveled Phantom, we're gonna hit this guy a few times, so he'll back off, and we can heal. Um, if you've got an overleveled Phantom, Hornet Ring, I'm putting it on, and I'm killing everything uh, that I can. Um, but against regular players, I just couldn't bring myself to wear the Hornet Ring, man. It's just, it's just loading screens. There you see him trying to block and the dark chip damage. I mean, against a black knight shield, you'll get a hundred chip damage. Um, this invasion actually started off well enough, and then I saw that gold was fighting the demon while the host just hung out, and I was like, that's a password summon phantom. And sure enough, that's a password summon phantom. He gets parried, he gets the dark infused Lothric knight sword repost, which doesn't finish him off, um, but the charged R2, that's more than enough. Uh, and then the host, he's gonna get his shit just absolutely pushed back in. He does get the Chaos Dagger, and he's fucking one-shot. Hornet Ring or no, that Chaos Dagger is fuck broke. Fuck broke. Um, I was actually kind of curious about what would it be like if you used a Chaos-infused Lothric Knight Sword, because it already has a 110 critical modifier on it. Um, but you wouldn't have the dark damage, which is what really fucks people up, because no one has dark defense unless they're a pyromancer. Um, as I said, I focus a lot. I love great swords. Um, this build actually reminds me a lot of my Moonlight great sword guy um, who doesn't have, he doesn't rely on spells. He just only uses the Moonlight great sword. He's an intelligence build, but with no attunement. This character is the same. Um, a knight starts off with one attunement slot. Uh, and for this character, it went into Black Flame because it's excellent. R1 Weapon art, R1, rest in peace. Um, I love the greatsword. Uh, the one attunement slot goes to Black Flame so that we can break open shields. Uh, but you could put whatever you wanted to in there. Um, but for me, it just black. It works so well uh, because Black Flame will guard break even great shields. Black Flame is fucking badonko nuts when it comes to guard breaks. Uh, but I put a couple of invasions in here so that we could uh, really appreciate the big, black, beautiful, hot, heavy, great sword. Oh god, look at that thing. If you aren't turned on, this really is the best of both worlds. This is everything I want in a build. I get to have a great sword. I get to sword and board. I love it. I love this build. Actually, I think I'm going to make a not uh, pyro version of this build. It'll be far less efficient. Far less efficient. But I think I'm going to make a quality version of this build that does sword and board and then black knight great sword. Um, but I won't have intelligence and faith. I'll have strength and dex. Uh, and I think Black Knight Greatsword will be the most efficient greatsword for that build as far as... Um, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't know, actually. Since the uh, adjustment to infusions, I don't know. Maybe there's a more efficient quality greatsword out there than the Black Knight Greatsword. It's possible, but I think I'll stick with the Black Knight Greatsword just because I like it. Um, <clears throat> this particular fight I've included uh, because I liked this guy that I fought. Uh, his name was Undying Legend, and he was an Artorias cosplay, and uh, you know, like, I was giving Demonic Nate shit for not being a lore-friendly character, and again, I don't really give a shit, you know what I mean? It doesn't doesn't bother me, it's just, it's funny. It's it's a funny thing to point out and say, haha, Undead Legion didn't use the Dark Sword and the Shield of One. It's funny to do that. In a funny voice! But I also wanted to, to highlight a good great sword fight that I had with the undying legend. It was pretty good. This duty sort of represents the opposite of, you know, an undying Nate or demonic Nate or whatever the fuck his name was. Uh, this guy is a very lore appropriate character and he was good with the great sword. So, um, this was a nice great sword v great sword showcase. Uh, that move is terrible, but as your Artorias, I understand you have to go for it. Um, if you get it as a guard break, it's awesome. I tried to go into the parry and the backstab didn't work. Um, but, yeah, that flippy move. 
Really good guard break. Not good for much else. Rip, Undying Legend. GG. No RE. WP. I mean, how can he not be turned on by big black great swords? Mm. Anyway, here's the stats one more time before we finish the video. 40 Vigor, 38 Endurance, 26 Vitality, 18 Strength, 20 Dex, 35, 35 Intelligence and Faith. Keep in mind, Prisoner's Chain is on, so those extra levels are coming from there. Uh, and one more again. You asked for it, and I fucking delivered. Uh, here's a good 4v1. Um, thought I was being sneaky watching the party. I was not being sneaky enough for that Pyromancer. Uh, he definitely caught me, called me out with a Chaos Bed Vestiges. Uh, because nothing screams easy mode like spamming that fucking spell. Not PvP easy mode. It's like PvE easy mode when you spam that spell. Unless you spam it uh, in a gank setting, and then it is PvP easy mode to just fucking spam that spell at people. Just fucking... Ugh. Disgustingly easy. But it costs two tournament slots! It's balanced! <laughs> um... And in duels, it's worthless. Anyway, he's an overleveled phantom. What does that mean? It means Hornet Ring. It means let's kill these motherfuckers. Let's get it done with. I'm trying to Hornet Ring backstab the wizard. Then I'm trying to Hornet Ring backstab the host. And I'm just not Hornet Ring backstabbing shit. Uh, so what we did there was we circled around. We we acted like we were running further into the level. Uh, but we actually just circled around to sneak attack from behind them. And the reason we didn't run further into the level uh, is because you don't want to just run into the level. I see so many invaders do this. Stop. Stop doing that. Make them earn the level. They have to... Every enemy needs you standing right there with it, fighting them. Don't run away and hide like a pussy-ass bitch. Keep fighting them. Start the fight. Start shit. Always be harassing them. Never leave them alone and don't just stand next to enemies like a great big puss. And I say this as a guy who's been doing dried finger runs and I've seen you fucking invaders just standing there like fucking pussies. I'm gonna pop a seat. You're not doing anything. I'm gonna get way of the blue on. You're not doing anything. You're not forcing me to stop playing. You think you are, but you're not. I'm actually in my inventory putting on way of the blue and I'm getting ready to gank your weak ass. Invade like an invader, not a pussy. So anyway, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm chucking uh, lightning urns at these dudes just to keep them busy. Uh, here's how you win a 4v1. Turn it into a, a bunch of separate one-on-ones as best you can. Uh, I think my boy Amish said that in one of his videos, and he, he couldn't be more right. 2v1? Fine, I'll do 2v1, especially Great Sword and Katana 2v1. I can manage that. Uh, Katana breaks away for a moment. He's fucking dead. It turned into a one-on-one, -on -one and I fucking ended his shit. Now, this host, he's, Oh, I've got a shield. I'm unbeatable. I've got a shield. My friend gave me the Havel armor. You are a disgrace. Go sit at that bonfire and think about what you've fucking done. He's so dead, he doesn't even know he's dead. And an overleveled phantom, he, he gets to survive. But whatever. He can watch us gloat. I love this build, man. It's just like, Oh, nice shield. Fuck your shield! <laughs>